Hey guys, welcome back. Having to do a plot synopsis for a film by acclaimed Romanian director Cristi Puiu is probably the biggest disservice you can do, because no matter how well you try to sum up the actual story in a concise manner, you're always going to be missing most of the point. But since this is a film review, I'm going to have to try anyway, so here we go. The film takes place precisely on the 10th of January 2015, just three days after the infamous Charlie Hebdo terrorist attack in Paris, and 40 days after the death of a close family member, whose relatives gather together to commemorate the deceased in what is known as a traditional orthodox memorial service known in Romanian as the Parastas. Now of course it wouldn't be a film if everything went according to plan, and thus we have a three hour long film that mostly takes place in this single apartment in which this family gathering of approximately about 15 people quarrel and squabble about the most typical of Romanian subjects, whether it be historical, geopolitical, or just plain gossip. Like the eternal argument between older and newer generations of the pros and cons of the communist period compared to the post-1989 democratic one, like was the person who we came to pay our respects to actually a decent person or not, will Jesus Christ actually have a second coming, were the 9-11 and the more recent Charlie Hebdo terrorist attacks inside jobs, is the neighbor cheating on his wife, etc etc etc. Now first of all I have to say that writer-director Christy Puyu is an absolute absolute inexhaustible source of opinion, of great insight and of introspection. You can basically ask him absolutely anything. You don't even have to ask him, you can just throw him a word and he will talk literally for hours. He is a very fascinating person to me, that's for sure, even though I occasionally have a hard time actually understanding what he is talking about or understanding what it has to do with the main point. He tends to digress during interviews, but nevertheless he has this unrestrained cognizance about him. He seems to be extremely conscious about what he is, about who he is, about the types of films he wants to be making, about the type of audience he wants to be making it to, about what he wants and what he doesn't want to say in his films, and I think his work is uncomparable. He is a true offer, in my opinion. Now besides the technical prowess, I mean his films are always very meticulously shot, edited and choreographed, always very uniquely told from a visual point of view, and they are pretty straightforward films, they are very easy to follow. Narratively he also seems to have an approach like no one else, even though that maybe wouldn't seem to be the case at the first glance. Because after hearing about what this film is about, and maybe even immediately after watching it, I think a typical reaction, mine at least, was, wow this is so self-referential, this is exactly how it is in my family, I recognize all of these little rituals and all of, the, all of these types of conversations, and I've seen this before, I've been through this before. But my question would be, have you really, have you truly experienced this this way? The camera work in typical Puyu fashion feels very timid this time as well. It feels very held back. It's basically refusing to force itself into a scene, but refusing to interfere, which is why we have many scenes in which a conversation might start in a room and then continue on into another room, but we are unable to follow it. We are unable to see it finish because the camera is not taking us along for the ride. This director has always done a fantastic job at creating the illusion of objectivity in a film, which is basically impossible because the camera will always be the position, will always be the eye of the filmmaker, only permitting us to see the events unfold from that point and that point alone. The film is indeed an endurance test. It's a very slow build, it doesn't shy away from taking its sweet time, and because of this you can really sink in and immerse yourself to the point where you start noticing some very interesting things. Even though there is some major drama going on here, the atmosphere is very tense, there seems to be this utter weightlessness to the whole thing, and it's probably one of the reasons why this film many times appears to be more of a comedy than anything else. And it's strange because you have this very important event, like a person you loved very much recently died. You're here as a family to spend precious time together, but these people's actions and the way they speak only prove just how out of touch they are with each other, just how useless they can make this whole ceremony seem. Because at the end of the day, all everyone really wants to do is just sit down at the table and fucking eat. And I think the film intentionally is very nihilistic because it is basically saying that at the end of the day nothing matters and nobody is right or wrong. It doesn't matter that everyone thinks they know better and they are willing to stand their ground. Because basically they are only scratching the surface and they don't know nobody knows jack shit. Remember what I said in the beginning that a plot synopsis for a film like this is basically a disservice? It's because the narrative skeleton we like to call the story in a Christy Puyu film, especially in this case, 
the point of it is not just what he as director and screenwriter can add to it. It's also what you as a viewer with your own life experience and opinions can take away from it, but can also add to it yourself in a way. Because this film is only as funny or as tragic as you allow it to be. There's nothing like really like inherently comedic or inherently dramatic about anything going on here. The tone doesn't seem to be something that's really like fast and securely into position. It kind of wobbles, you know what I mean? And I think this film works this way on all levels. Visually, narratively, like it doesn't spoon feed, but it's also, it's not ambiguous at all. You know exactly what's going on. You even know like your mind fills in the gaps. There are things here that are not actually in the film, but you know are in the film, even though there are things that are not even uttered. It's very, very, very cool. This film is about so many different things. It's about love, it's about hate, it's about life, it's about death, it's about hope, it's about hopelessness. But at the same time, just as its characters, it's willingly, basically, only just scratching the surface. It doesn't give you any clear answers to anything. It doesn't give you, like, any, like, clear vision of the world. It's excellent storytelling, and I loved it. And last but not least, the icing on the cake, the title of the film, Sierra Nevada. Two different places in different parts of the world with the same name. What the fuck does it have to do with a Romanian film that takes place in Bucharest in an apartment? That's the cool thing about it, folks. It, it doesn't mean anything, but it might mean something. It can mean whatever you want it to mean. Just like this film, you can take away whatever you want to take away from it. I loved it. I think it's one of the best films this year for sure. One of the best films maybe in years. Essential viewing. Thanks for watching my review as always. I will hope to see you later with other reviews. Until then, take care people and goodbye.